Now that we've talked about distribution of monomials onto polynomials, so multiplying one term onto several terms, we're going to start talking about distribution of polynomials. So when you have more than one term multiplied times more than one term, different concept? Not really. You see, the idea of distribution is the idea that I talked about in the last video, passing out cards. We basically just want to, or shaking hands, a lot of people use that analogy too. We basically just want to make sure that every term meets every other term. In distribution of monomials, it was taking that single term and multiplying it times all of its term friends inside the parentheses, getting rid of the parentheses. That's what distribution does. It actually performs the multiplication. It takes one term times every single term for however many you had in your parentheses. That was last video. Now we have well, really the same idea, it's just we have more than one single term, more than one little loner guy out front. We got a couple of them, a couple buddies. So first let's see what we're doing. If we have two terms times two terms, and we can tell that it's multiplication, we know that anytime parentheses are next to parentheses, we do have that multiplication. Here's what distribution and the multiplication of polynomials tells us. Every one of these terms needs to get multiplied onto every single one of these terms. The order, doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as all of them multiply. Now you're going to learn, um, or you have learned, or you've seen somewhere, this, uh, this acronym called FOIL. First, outside, inside, last. And people, man, treat that like it's, it's just golden. It's not. Uh, it doesn't really matter the order in which you do this. FOIL is just a great way to, rem to make sure you, you don't miss any terms. So what they mean by FOIL, first, outside, inside, last, is basically how you would walk through uh, your, your distribution pattern. So how you would ensure that every one of these two terms gets multiplied by every single one of these ter two terms. The, the F in FOIL. Would stand for multiplying your first terms together. So that seems pretty natural. Let, let's see if, if we if we multiply. I want to make sure that every single one of these terms meets every single one of these terms. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I showed you one other thing. Since we're multiplying, <clears throat> multiplying terms, what we do with the exponents is one level below what we see. I'm going to stop kind of preaching that the, the, a lot right now because it should be kind of ingrained in your head since I've said it like 50,000 times in the last like 10 videos. But give yourself an exponent. You see, when we multiply, we say, oh, hey, x times x. I'm multiplying. What do I do with the exponents? Add them. It's always one level below what you see. We're going to get the x squared. That's what the first stands for. Now the outsides. Outsides is a way to look at the outside of your problem. Say, okay, well, what's x to the first times 5? Let your numbers multiply together. Let your exponent rules take over for your variables. That would be 5x. So we're going to put plus 5x. Positive 5x, we think positive, we write plus. Now, well, that's taken this term. Notice this. That's taken this term and multiplied it to both of these terms. Great. We're basically halfway done. You see, for every term here, we multiply to every term here. That gives us two terms. But then this guy, this term, also needs to multiply. So we've done the first and the outside. That's what the first two do. They allow you to multiply the first term times both of these terms. Now, the second term on your first polynomial, that, that positive 3, that is its, its own term. That also needs to multiply because if you're going to multiply polynomials, well, imagine if you didn't do anything with the 3. That'd be exactly the same as just multiplying x. That, you go back. You go back to monomials. We don't have a monomial. We've got a polynomial. It's got more than one term. So if you just ended right there, you would have only distributed a monomial onto a polynomial. Well, a polynomial is several monomials put together, typically. So now we have another monomial that needs to distribute, that needs to multiply. That's exactly what we're doing. It's no fancier than that. I know FOIL seems like this is special math. It's not special math. You're just taking every monomial every individual term, and multiplying it through in successive order. That's all that's going on. So this term times all of them. Now this next monomial, the next term, times all of them. Uh, positive 3 times x is positive 3x, so plus 3x. Positive 3 times 5, positive 5 is positive 15, right? Plus 15. That right there is the first, then the outside, 
the inside terms, that's the 3 times the x, and the last terms in every polynomial, that's the inside and last. That's where these four terms came from. Notice that. How many terms did we start with? Let's see. Two there. How many terms here? There's two there. Two times two is four terms before you combine any like terms if you have any. That's always going to happen. Just like monomials, uh, when you multiply a term onto uh, these several of the terms, you're getting the same number of terms as the inside parentheses. Well, now that we have basically two monomials, x and 3, put together, every one of those monomials is going to distribute through. That's going to give you this many terms for every single term you have here. What that means is that this is going to give you two terms, this is going to give you two more. You should have this many terms times this many terms. Two times two is four terms. Now, something interesting happens, something different uh, than multiplying just a single monomial. If we multiply polynomials times polynomials, oftentimes we'll get these like terms. So, no, oh great, we already know about that though. We know about like terms. Most of the time your like terms will happen right in the middle. So if you're going to look for like terms anywhere, it's going to be in the middle two terms or middle six terms or whatever the middle number of terms are. It depends on how large your polynomials get. So let's look. Do we have any like terms? Well, we don't have any with x squared. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to start talking about order. We really, really, really like our polynomials to be able to be we consider order. What that means is that in a polynomial, we like the exponent to be descending if possible. So x to the second, that had no like terms. We're done with that guy. I look for my x to the first terms. I've got two of them. If you're not comfortable with like terms, go back and watch the video before you continue because you've got to be good at like terms. You see right now, we're dealing with a couple different rules. We did, we, we're dealing with exponent rules through multiplication, and now we're dealing with combined like terms rules. We've got to be really on our game. It's not hard, but it's easy to make mistakes. It's different. So we've just distributed. We've been correct on adding our exponents. We had a couple coefficients that we multiplied, had some constants that we multiplied. Now we're combining like terms. There's none with x squared, but there are with x's. 5x and 3x. Now, we're adding here. What do you do with exponents in adding? Well, there's nothing below addition, so don't do anything with them. Exactly. That's why they have to be the same so as not to change them, not to, be, not to have to do anything with them. So 5x plus 3x, that's 8x. Not 8x to the second. You see, with exponent rules, what you do with the exponents is one level below what you see. If you see addition on the board, you can't change those exponents when you're at combining like terms. You can't change them. You can't add them, because if you add them, you'd be talking about multiplication. You can't multiply them, because if you did, if you multiply them, you'd be talking about exponents. So we're not doing anything with the exponents. We're not changing them. That's a one, that's a one, and that's a one. Why? What you do with exponents is one level below what you see. So we have a one and a one. If you combine them, they're not changing. That's why they had to be the same in the first place, so that we could add them together and not have to change them. Now, lastly, we have that plus 15. There's no like terms of that constant. We'll just put it at the back end, erase our 1. We cannot go any further than that. There are no like terms. We're done. This is what we call in order for polynomials. This is how we really like to see them. We like to see the largest power first, and then the next largest power second. And then at the very end, we like to see any constants if we have one. I hope that makes sense. I hope that you're understanding that really this is no different than multiplying monomials times polynomials. You just happen to have two of them now. It's going to make the question for our next little video, what if you don't just have two? What if you have like three and five? Can you still do it? Yeah, the concept doesn't change. So many people get wrapped up in, well, you can only foil. Uh, that's, that's all there is. I'm just foiling. That's, that's what math is. That's so all the math is. That's a good way to remember first, outside, inside, last as a way to hit every monomial times every monomial, every term times every term. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, but that's, that's not the idea. The idea is every term gets multiplied by every term. Doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you don't miss any. And then when we combine like terms, we like it to be in order. Largest powers to smallest powers. That's really what multiplication of polynomials is. The, the reason why I don't want you to get super wrapped up in FOIL and why I'm not a, a huge advocate is because 
what if you have more than two terms? Are you going to foil oil or something like that? I mean, I, it doesn't make sense. Understand the idea. The idea is just every term times every term. Now, we'll practice that a couple more times. I would encourage you to do it. I really would. First thing I would do is notice the operation. There's no plus. There's no minus. There's, there's a multiplication here. So I'm certainly going to be distributing. Now, distribution takes every term in one polynomial even if it's just a monomial, and multiplies it onto every term in the other polynomial, thereby distributing and multiplying our polynomials. What that means is that our exponent rules are going to apply. I'm going to show them just for right now so that I can get the hang of that exponent rules. So I'm going to start looking at my first term here. I'm going to multiply it through every single term that I see in the other polynomial. I'm basically distributing a monomial times a polynomial. Now, as I'm doing it, I'm noticing that I'm multiplying. One level below that is addition. So I should be adding my exponents. Don't change your multiplication of your coefficients. That's fine. But what I do with exponents is one level below. So 1 times 2, well, that's going to give me 2. x times x, that's going to give me x squared. I'm adding my exponents. x to the first times negative 1. Hey, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. There's no other x's, so I'm going to keep that x and get negative 1x. That's just taken and multiplied my monomial here. Time, well, that, I shouldn't say it's monomial. I mean, it's part of a polynomial, but that individual term times both of those two terms in the other polynomial. Now, I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to pretend it's not there. I have a positive 6. Notice how I don't cover that sign. That sign has to distribute, much like it's going to right there. So I'm going to think about 6 times 2x. Well, that's 12x. Positive 12x, we're going to write down plus 12x. And lastly, this term needs to multiply by the last term as well. So 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. I'm going to write minus 6. Two terms times two terms gives us four terms. Then we combine. Do you have any like terms with 2x squared? I don't see any, but that's my largest power. And you're going to notice that even if this is out of order, I'm always going to look for the largest power first. So that's 2x squared. It's a good practice because we really like our polynomials to be in order from descending on descending exponents. Now I'm going to look for any x's. Well, I see a negative x. I see a positive 12x. That's cool. Hey, those are like terms. They both have exactly the same variable parts. So what I do with my combined like terms, what I do with the exponents, nothing. I see addition. I don't do anything with the exponents. So it's going to be see, negative 1 plus 12. That's 11x. Do not change your exponents when you combine like terms. That's why they have to be the same in the first place. And lastly, we have that constant of negative 6. So I'm going to write minus 6. That's it. We're multiplying every term here times every term here. If you haven't already, you really should try that one on your own. Now, it's still multiplication. We still have variables. I'm going to give them all at least a power of 1. That way, when we start distributing, our exponent rules are easier to see. Now, you're going to notice that's out of order. We really could write this as negative y plus 4. We really could write this as 3y plus 5. If you want to change it right off the bat, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is making sure, ensuring that you're multiplying every term times every term. I show the lines connecting them. It's a really good way for me to, uh, to, to make certain that I, I'm, I'm not missing anything. I don't do it in my head without writing that. I really don't. I've been doing this for a long time. I really st literally still do that. It, it just helps me. I never make, make a mistake, though, either. Well, I shouldn't say never. I'm probably going to make a mistake now. Um, but I rarely make mistakes, at least on missing terms, because I always show what I'm doing, uh, especially when you get more than two terms times more than two terms. It can be pretty hairy. So I'm going to show this first term times this first term. That's 20. I'm going to multiply my 4 times the next term. That's 3y to the first. Let's see. Let the numbers multiply. That's 12 positive 12. There's no variable, so I have no exponent rules to apply. I've hit this term times both of those. Now the next one, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cover up the side, just the 4. So negative y. I'm now distributing negative y. Negative y times 5 is negative 5y. I'm going to write minus 5y. Lastly, negative y times 3y. Let the numbers multiply. It's negative 3. 
So I'm going to write minus 3. y times y, do exponents multiple that I see, I should be adding them, it's y squared. Notice if you do that, how that kind of jacks up your problem. Because if you do that, all three of those would be like terms. This is why it was imperative, why I've been just kind of throwing it at you, that what you do with exponents is one level below what you see. Because if we make a mistake on distribution, you're going to have like terms that you shouldn't. Uh, so when we're really careful on this, y times y, y the first times y the first, it's why I'm putting those exponents up there. Because if you're multiplying, which we are, you should be adding exponents. You have to get that y to the second, and then those are no longer all three like terms. Now, I said something a couple, a couple minutes ago that we want polynomials in order. That means when you get down to this step, don't, just don't go from, from over here. Look for the largest power. Largest power is in this term. So I'm, I'm not going to start necessarily from left to right. I'm going to look for the terms of the largest powers. And I'm going to look to see if there's any like terms with those terms. So negative 3y squared, I don't see any other, any other y squareds. I have no like terms. We're going to write negative 3y squared. No problem. After that, now I'm looking for the next largest power. So I've already done y to the second. Now I'm going to do y to the first. I see a 12y. we got a negative 5y. Hey, 12y, negative 5y. Um, what I do with exponents is one level below what I see. I'm adding. Don't do anything with exponents. Just add the numbers. Just add the coefficients. That's positive 7 y to the first. By the way, if these aren't like terms now, they will not become like terms after you combine like terms. That's a logical absurdity. <laughs> you can't combine like terms and get more like terms to combine. You would have already done it. Lastly, we have 20. That's positive 20. So we're going to put plus 20. That's it. You can't go no further. It's in order. It looks really nice. That's the idea on, on distribution of polynomials or multiplication of polynomials. It's the same thing. It means the same thing. We really need to make sure that we're having every term in one polynomial get multiplied by every term in the other polynomial. I think monomials. I think of each term as a little monomial that I'm distributing. So distribute, and then the next one. Distribute, and then the next one. Distribute. And you can do this all day long. It gets a little tedious. So we're, we're really worried about exponent rules. We're worried about when we're multiplying, that we're adding exponents. And after that, when you combine into like terms, that you're not adding exponents. That's the main mistake that I mostly see, is that people get to here and start adding powers together because they just did it. That's it. In the next video, we're going to talk about multiplying more than two terms times more than two terms. And I'll see you for that one.